Hey and welcome, my name is Nicola and in this video I'm gonna be showing you the process of designing and renovating my kitchen and dining space. In these clips you can see how space currently looks like. My two main goals with this project will be to increase functionality and to make it more aesthetically pleasing with a fairly small budget of around 600 euros. Sounds kinda impossible because I want a full makeover but I'm gonna be doing mostly everything by myself. So there will be a lot of DIY projects and since this is my first time tackling some major renovation stuff in the kitchen area, I just hope it'll turn out good. So let's begin. Starting with the floor plan. This is a two bedroom apartment of approximately 66 square meters and it is positioned on second floor. Building was built in the 80s, so tiles and windows are from that period, but kitchen cabinets are from early 2000. Kitchen is located here, with one window facing east. Then we have dining room, which is also connected to living room. Small balcony that is oriented to south and pantry that also have one small window. This whole elongated section consists of smaller sized rooms, especially width-wise. Now I'm primarily focusing on the kitchen and dining room. The biggest problem in the kitchen is definitely lack of counter space. As you can see on this side, this is only usable surface. My idea is to remove that small portion and install new countertop in one piece from stove over dishwasher to the other end with a new single basin sink and also replace the faucet. Apart from that, I have to take down the wallpaper and fix area around window. I will also replace countertop on the other side, so they are all the same. We never use folding door towards pantry. They just get in the way, so I'm gonna remove them and try to make arched doorway. I feel like that will add such a nice touch because everything else in kitchen is rectangular. Looking at that, I came up with an idea to introduce symmetry into this space. Since it will be too complicated to find and do the same tiles here on these surfaces, I want different wall material that will look cohesive with tiles and I'm thinking vertical shiplap boards painted white would be a good option. This way both sides of kitchen would look less disjointed. To complete the look, I want two wall sconces on each side. This wall can be seen directly from dining room, so it's logical to make it almost like a feature wall. And here are some inspirational photos that I gathered for this project. Dark countertops, brass faucet and other details white sheep lap, earthy and warm tones, colored glass. putting things away and cleaning, it was time for the first task. I expected that removing wallpaper would take no more than half an hour, but oh how I was wrong. Right about here is when I noticed that I was pulling not only wallpaper, but many other different layers underneath. I don't know why this happened. Maybe they used too much glue, or walls were just not prepared properly for this type of wallpaper. Only thing that I could do is just scrape all the layers up until molder itself. And I'll just say that this was not easy at all.
after almost two long days of just scraping and scraping. Walls needed to be smoothed out and for that I used plain wall padding. After applying it with spatula, I waited a few hours for it to dry before I sanded it with 220 grit sanding sponge. Finally walls in kitchen were ready for paint and thankfully walls in dining room were good to go for painting right away. I choose this neutral color, it's on the lighter side, but still dark enough to make contrast with white cabinets and trim. When I tested it, it on wall, it came out differently, looked more like pink than neutral. I quickly discovered that my red brick flooring have impact on walls because of the reflection, so I needed to alter color a bit. And how to neutral a stone that you don't like? Well, just add color that is opposite on color wheel, and in my case that was green. I used the same color for both kitchen and dining room, and it came out exactly how I wanted. It gave room this really nice, cozy and warm feel. turning point where this whole project can either fail completely or signify the crucial step for the most essential improvement. The current cabinets are actually not that bad. Structurally they are okay and with new door hardware will appear brand new. Firstly I needed to prepare them. I unscrewed and removed upper part. Since this washer is the same height as cabinets, I had to raise them for roughly 4 cm, so the new countertop can span over it. I replaced shorter legs with longer ones. I turn off the water and disconnected all pipes and drain. And then I removed old kitchen sink. Surprisingly, everything went smoothly. I checked multiple times that the surface was level and adjusted legs if needed. I decided on these dark countertops because I really wanted to change all white look in kitchen and to add contrast and heaviness to it. I bought two pieces, one regular length and one smaller. The bigger piece is for right side and it needs one cut to be required length. It will have 3 cm overhang on the side so the side panel will be positioned below it. Smaller countertop piece will have two cuts, one for side panel to create waterfall edge and other for left side. I only have one chance to cut and get everything right. I started with smaller piece, 
the most important thing is to have good measurements. So I measured everything five times and marked lines for cutting. I attached straight scrap piece of wood as a guide for circular saw with which I will cut it. I do have experience with using this tool, but never with this type of material and shape. To get clean crisp cut, I tape it both sides with masking tape and put a new sharp blade. Even though these sides where cut is exposed will be hidden, I didn't want to leave them unfinished. With these IKEA countertops, they provide you with strips that are glued and fitted to the edge. Budget. One of the reasons I took everything from IKEA is that I knew that IKEA sink would fit on IKEA countertop and that IKEA faucet would fit IKEA sink, so I didn't have to worry about compatibility. I won't go too much into details for installation, I simply followed IKEA instructions and I didn't have any major problems. It's definitely easier to assemble everything before putting countertop on its final place. One thing that I messed up at the very end is when I outlined sink on the surface for cutting, I changed its location multiple times and ended up with a bunch of parallel lines and I started cutting on the wrong one. So either mark it once or mark the right cut lines with another color. Honestly, this turned out better than I imagined. I want to show how one ordinary IKEA item can be easily transformed into something that has a more custom look and gives the kitchen a more distinctive appearance. See you in part 2, where I will complete all the work in the kitchen, 
do some stuff in the dining room and decorate it as the final phase. 